Hello, everyone. Um, I am back. Thank you again for being here. Um, this is my colleague and friend and trusty Toucan producer, Shiley. And we're both really, really thrilled that you're here to talk about yes. Toucan Producer with us and the work that we've done to help people launch their own really cool events. So as you may have seen in the email that I sent out, the Toucan Producer, just a little overview of, of what it is, is it's basically just an assistant to help with your events. So we know that events can sometimes be stressful. We like to take everything off your plate and make it super easy so that you can actually focus on enjoying the event, which is really difficult sometimes um, when you're the host. So Shiley and I have yes. both worked on hundreds of events and we know a lot of stuff um, and we know what works and we know what doesn't. And this is just going to be a really kind of informal conversation between the two of us. We're going to shoot some questions back and forth, but please, um, one thing that I want to say right off the bat is if you have any questions, I would love if you would write them down in the, in the global chat in the bottom right corner, Shiley just sent a message in there. You can send your own questions there. We will see them. And um, we yes. might ask you to come up on stage and ask them um, if if you'd feel comfortable with that. We're always happy to, to read them out loud. But you're among friends here. We just want this to be interactive. Um, and then after our conversation, we're going to have time to just kind of mingle and you'll be able to ask us questions that you may not want the entire group to know maybe they're more specific to your own yes. situation um but we're we're gonna be bopping around and here to help as always so like i said yes. this is shyly shyly do you want to say a quick um, couple of words about yourself and introduce yourself uh yes yeah, so my name is shyly hakimi and i am Toucan producer here. I love Toucan. So let me tell you how much I love Toucan. So I've been a user of Toucan for, I don't know, a year and a half, more. more. I don't know. It's somewhere in the data. And I loved it because I was tired of boring networking events on Zoom where everyone's talking over each other and you can't get intimate with people. And when I saw this, I was like, it's like real life, except on the internet. So I brought this tool to one of my clients who has a very international community. And now we all get to talk to each other as if we're in the same room, which is so impossible otherwise. When I saw this, I was like, my events hosts can use this. Oh my gosh, I would love to go to more events. So I was totally obsessed. That's how I got to know Antonia and the rest of the team. And eventually they're like, Shiley, we want you to talk more about Toucan to more people. And I was like, yeah, sure. So <laughs> I jumped on board to help more people have more meaningful, engaging events and to take what they already know about the event. Oh, I got some hearts. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> well, I want them to take what they already know about community building. I know we have a Twitter host in the room today. To take what you already know about community and what you know about events from the real world and from all the things that you've done and really bridge that uh, with the tools of the web to make it really feel similar. But maybe even better in a lot of ways. So that is my fun. And that is my passion uh, with this. And I'm glad I get to be a part of the team to amp you all up. And like Antonia said, I will be here to chat with you about ideas and things you can do with this platform and ways to extend what you already know and love to the web with this amazing tool. So with that, thank you, Shiley. I want to find out more. <laughs> a lot of stuff we can talk about. <laughs> I, I already have a bunch of questions that I want to ask you really quick, just for anybody who doesn't know me. Please. I am um, Antonia Hellman. I'm co-founder and CEO of Toucan. So I've been working on this for two years. And the reason why I started it with um, my brother and actually three experienced entrepreneur co-founders in March of 2020 is because I was sent home from school. And one week later, I was already extremely fed up with the boring events that I was going to. And I was losing connections with people. I was I, I just felt like I was never meeting anybody new. And that was a really big part of my university experience and also just my personal enjoyment. I, I love meeting new people. And um, I kind of said to myself, why would I settle for what's going on right now when I feel like I understand what we need to to actually be able to make real connections in a virtual space, especially for virtual communities that are so popular and getting more and more popular um, 
as we speak because of the way that we've all been living for the past two years. So that's a little bit about me. Um, and so just to kick it off with the first, ugh, first question, I think a lot of people are wondering, Shiley, you talked about one of your clients that you brought on to Toucan very early on. What kind of what really resonated with her and how did you work with her to create kind of like a toucan producer experience before toucan producer actually existed oh my gosh what a juicy question so one of my one of my clients gets very nervous hosting events but people love and adore her she's a great following on linkedin and she's very cool and a lot of people were into this whole holiday party idea and uh so we're like what do we do how are we gonna do this and i was like we're gonna do it we're gonna make it happen and what we did is we got i don't know i think we had like 80 people in here it was bonkers and what we did is we started with we broke up the content as somebody who like i don't want to be in the same situation ongoing like even how we're doing this talk we break up this whole event to like here there's some content so what we did is i had her speak at the beginning and share some insights with her group that's relevant to her business some inspirational stuff and then she said hey now go and talk to someone new about an icebreaker that you want so we made all the different bubbles icebreakers that they could choose so if you wanted to talk about your job you could do it you want to talk about your pet you can do it if you want to go to the introverts unite bubble you could do it and it gave people that choice to go talk to each other right but then we also came back after like 10 15 minutes uh and we said okay now here's a new little mini portion of this event mini speech okay go find a new bubble to talk to and the people would shuffle around and found uh like kind of permission and confidence to go meet somebody new mm -hmm. and it was a really beautiful thing and then we did it again last year for the, the last holiday season and it was absolutely lovely one of the best quotes that came out is that one person said that it felt like they were um like in real life and on top of that they said you know when you're on a zoom call 30 minutes can feel like an hour and a half it feels so long when you're on a toucan an hour and a half can feel like 30 minutes because time goes by so fast uh when you get to talk and I don't love yeah. hearing other people talk for hours and hours. So the balance, huge for me. So that's mm -hmm. one of the things I did with my client. We made sure to promote it really well. We were there to help people with like a help bubble. Um, if they weren't sure what to do next, I was on, on deck to make sure that they can navigate this experience in the best way possible. And now I get to do it with other folks. I think, but I know you've had some cool event experiences too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I definitely have. And I think that the, Really the most important thing that you said, you just said a lot of important things, but most important thing that you said from a Toucan producer perspective, as the two of us were working with um, clients and, and people who are hosting events, is that they oftentimes do want to break up their event. So whether yeah. that's into two parts, which is a presentation and then networking or three parts, yeah. which is a presentation and then a you know Q&A like a live kind of Q&A and then networking or even four parts so an introduction a debate a follow up kind of Q&A section and then networking yes. or even more than that we we've, we've seen some really really complex stuff um but that's kind of where we come in so that's what I've I feel pretty lucky to have gotten pretty good at same with you is just juggling all of the different phases of an event and that's really why you can producer exists is, is that for people who don't throw events all the time that's that's the biggest headache and that's the thing that causes the most stress um in addition to using third-party software which i'm we should talk about later because it's uh, also a huge key yes. piece of what we do. But to talk about yes. some of the events that I've hosted, the most crazy event that I've hosted, um, we did this together actually, was the uh, the debate that was hosted by that one um, VC fund where yes. they said, we want to bring leading experts in this topic to Toucan, we want to have everything be on the minute. So everything needs to happen on the minute. Everybody needs to be familiar with the platform, especially our speakers. Um, and then, 
everyone, you know, they're going to cycle in and out of, of showing their screen because they're going to be presenting their arguments and then there's going to be time for a rebuttal. And then we need to have a Q and A and then we're going to have a moderator. There were so many different layers and it was very rich. It was a very, very rich event. Um, but that just meant that we needed to consult with their team and their speakers a lot. Um, and we put together a ton of materials, a lot of how to videos and kind of pa like pamphlets for their speakers and for their attendees. And as a result, the event ran incredibly smoothly. We also live streamed it and there were hundreds of people who either yeah. came to the event or watched the live stream. And so that was, it was yes. really gratifying, not just for us, but for the hosts who, um, wouldn't have been able to pull it off, not because they're not smart, but because they just needed more hands. And we and were those hands. They have other things hands. to worry about. What? They have other things to exactly. worry about. If you're at a company, you don't need to learn a whole new brand new skill and try to figure something out. Get someone else to offload it for you. Exactly. And, and they were also, they were juggling a lot too. They were moderating the event. Um, and they were yep. kind of, ushering people to and from different meeting spots um like you mentioned so you can we have a couple of meeting spots up right now where we can segment this event into different topics and so that was really helpful for that debate as well 100 yeah. percent. so we've heard from from you about a variety of different things that we can do uh, i know there's a lot of people who ask about limitations what you can do what you can't do um i think some people are like oh it's a new thing what do i bring who do i bring there how many people can i have there's a lot of stuff there i know we can mm -hmm. dive into that for hours and hours um but there's quite a few things we can talk about here i know i'm looking for oh yeah sara just dropped in we have a toucan blog that has lots of tips icebreaker ideas mm -hmm. great hosting ideas i know i see Janessa really likes our energy. I love it. There's a lot of different things we can talk about from tips to uh, how to make this happen, various advantages for this thing. Where do we want to go with this? We've got so much we can say. And if we have questions in the chat, feel free. So, <laughs> yes, first of all, if, if there are questions in the chat, we'd love to, to kind of inject them into our conversation. But I'm kind of curious because, Shiley, you talk to so many people who are new to Toucan or who have visions for kind of elaborate events. What are some of the biggest questions that you get, the most common questions that you get from Ooh. hosts? Well, I got one of the questions I got earlier was how many people can you have in here? Uh, so the whole space can have up to 150 people, but like our own little cluster bubble can have up to 16. Mm -hmm. uh, now, do you need 16? <laughs> depends on what kind of event you're hosting but if you're trying to get away from that like zoom vibe of like every but like one person talks at a time and you never know who's gonna talk next that can get a little awkward mm -hmm. um so it's like it is nice to have sometimes options for more intimate conversations so that's one question i get all the time there's also it's not exactly a question i get but like when you see like one thing that people should know is that we right now are in a space which is kind of like an infinite room that you could join at any time theoretically you could come in here when we are not here and you could use it uh, it is literally an open that. space for everybody we created this space yes. to be public so if you wanted to bring somebody on a toucan quick psa you can bring them here and it's it's open you to you all the time yes and so we have that and we also have event spaces which are like temporary so let's say you have a two-hour event it'll close after around two at two-ish hours and everybody will leave so there's a couple different options here i really do love a space because i could just send someone the link and they have it all the time and they can mm -hmm. join and it's kind of lovely so that's one thing i get from folks all the time um can that's, I, that's one of the things can i jump in real quick actually yeah jump in please. because i get asked sometimes um what if there are larger events? Because we help people plan events that have more than 150 people, yeah. which is great. The reason why, um, there are a couple of reasons why 150 is our limit. Um, it's just, it's technological constraints. First of all, we can increase it over time, um, but 150 is kind of a sweet spot. Also, in an event with more than 150 people, it's easy for, for folks to feel kind of lost and overwhelmed. It's a pretty big event. Even in, in real life, if you've attended an event with more than 150 people, 
kind of bumping into people can be can be difficult and finding people can be hard. So what I say to that in response, though, is there's a really cool feature in the space info tab in the bottom left corner. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can find an attendee list. And if you're looking for somebody in particular, you can search their name. And if you click on their name, you can actually find them. They'll be centered and um, there'll be a white flash on your screen to show you where they are. So that's a really great way to find your friends if you're worried about, about having lost them. Um, but the tip for having more than 150 people 150 people in an event is to either run multiple events simultaneously where you can say okay up to 150 people can be in this space and up to 150 people can be in this space divide yourselves and we've actually never had a problem with one space getting overrun when a host says you can go to one of these two spaces um so splitting the two is really great for networking with more than 150 people. If you have yes. a presentation of sorts, though, we recommend live streaming. Live streaming has worked really well for us um, and for our users yep. where certain people have access to the Toucan space. So they get to network and they get to be a part of, of that networking. But if you have a separate ticket, for instance, that's just for live stream, then you can direct them to LinkedIn Live or YouTube Live, whatever you have access to. And we use a yep. platform called Restream that's really, really good um, and is super easy to use. And it just pipes your screen share, essentially, to another social media platform. Exactly. It is lovely. But I do love this whole like VIP and not VIP. Like, this is like the inside track that we, I think, tell me if you agree in the chat or with hearts, if you agree with the statement, like, I loved going to conferences. If you look behind me, there's a whole lanyard collection of conferences. I am a conference junkie. And I, <laughs> I love the hallway experience of like talking to different, oh, Virginia, I see you agree. Thank you. The hallway opportunity where you can like bump into people and talk to them. Like, yeah, I like speakers, but sometimes I want to talk to each other. And I think that was kind of lost in the COVID era of the internet. And granted, there's a lot of these platforms out there that have virtual event spaces and it's fine, but there's something light about this one that makes it so much lower to barrier to entry. There's no like emoji characters that you have to move around a virtual space, which I find kind of awkward. I don't know if you agree with that. But uh, I love that this can be that hallway track is what we call it at some of my conferences is that you can bump into someone and say hi to them and then you can go away. Uh, it's a great way to be a little bit more intimate with people mm -hmm. than you would have if you were anywhere else and without it being cheesy and awkward. I hope you don't yeah. think it's cheesy and awkward. It's fun. Um, something that you're really good at, Shiley, actually, is encouraging oh. people to interact with one another and to get engaged. So we've already yes. seen you, you say, you know, send me send me hearts, send me claps if you agree with yeah. this statement. And it, it really gets people involved and it shows everyone else in the event that other people are involved, which encourages them to get involved themselves. What are the yeah. best ways in your opinion to increase, to boost engagement um, and just make sure that people are having a more fun time? Ooh, so this is where I, all my event hosts in the house who like do this for a living, who've done this virtually or in person, you all know this. You want to make sure your event is welcoming and that people can come in and they get the support they need. The biggest heartbreak, like, I'll, I'll go back to like going to a new school in second grade and not knowing where to sit at the lunch table. It is awkward. But if there was one nice kid that would be like, hey, Shiley, come sit with me. Uh, like that would have made my, like, that would make me feel so good. And the magic is that you can do that on Toucan. I know uh, I bumped in and jumped into folks folks' bubble just to be like, hi, how are you? Welcome. Are you finding the platform okay? So you can manually go in and welcome people, which I think is so beautiful, which is really mm -hmm. hard when you're in a Zoom with like 100 people. It's hard to like really 
keep track of every relationship. And I do this even on Zoom too. Like I, I did it with a bunch of you here. I DM'd you and said, hey, do you have any questions? And when I do that, it's it's really a personal conversation I'm having with each of you here. So if you did have a question, reply to that conversation chat I sent you. Uh, but that's something that makes it beautiful. If you can make each person feel welcomed and not alone and help connect mm -hmm. them, like that's a skill that has nothing to do with Toucan. Toucan is a tool. It's what you bring to it that can make it so special. And I think that's where I really love helping folks is to bridge. This is really my entire life, bridging what people already know to what their possibilities are. And I think that's what the magic is of Toucan Producer. The platform isn't going to magically do it all for you, but it's a tool yeah. to help you do the thing that you know in your heart and soul, which is why I love having these conversations with folks. Uh, what was I going to also say? Um, oh, I always tell hosts, this is another tip, to test drive. Um, Mm -hmm. I told a host, I was like, come to Toucan and host something here. And he was mad at me when I, that I told him you couldn't see everyone's faces at the same time. And I was like, we're not trying to be Zoom. There's a reason why I want you to come here. I don't want to see everyone's faces all the time. I want to talk to each other more personally. And, you know, and that's so nice for me because all of the calls I have with them are like one big call. And I'm like, come on, stop it. So I always tell people, you know, what would have prevented that problem is I told him to test it. He didn't listen to me. And I was like, I know what I'm doing. Test it out. Bring five friends. See what it feels like. It'll open open up your possibilities, right? Mm -hmm. um, or call one of us because we're here to help. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, there are a couple, couple of responses to what you just said Please. that I think stick out yes. for me. Um, the first is that's one of the reasons actually why we host these events. So for everybody here, this is something that you can pass on to anybody, you know, anybody you think might be interested in learning about Toucan, anybody who runs yep. a community, anybody who's interested in networking, just send them the link and tell them to come whenever we're having one of these events because we love hosting larger events of people to show them how the platform works. So these events, as much as they are for kind of seasoned Toucan pros, if we're talking about Toucan producer, they're also for complete beginners because we always run through from the basics and then we start talking about the more advanced stuff. And so yes. it, it's really open open for everybody and also the best way to learn how Toucan works because Toucan is cooler. I don't think this is lost on anybody. Toucan is cooler when there are more people in the space. Otherwise, you know, if you're just talking to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, it's pretty and it's got circles, but you might as well be using any other video conferencing platform where it really shines when you get more than eight people so enough to make multiple groups and that's what we've got at this yes. event so that we encourage people to if they want to introduce somebody to toucan point them in the direction of these events um then yeah. the second thing kind of bringing it way back to the first thing that you said um something that i love to do is when people come into the space i just send them a wave I love just waving to them. I don't automatically join their conversation all the time um, because I don't want to feel, I don't want them to feel pressured to talk to me. Sometimes I do just to say hi. But when I wave to somebody, it just means that I'm a friendly face that they can come talk to. So if they don't know where to go, if they don't know who to talk to, if they don't know anybody else in the space, they can certainly come and talk to me whenever they want. Um, and that's also something to keep in mind because sometimes it can be awkward leaving a conversation. That's always, that's just something that's hard to do in real life as well. But if I've sent you a wave or if somebody else has sent you a wave, you can always use them as an excuse, um, to leave your conversation, to go and, and talk to them. So it just, those nonverbal communication cues not only indicate people's involvement with the event, but they also, they provide this really much needed, uh, I guess, understanding of who's a friend, um, even if you've never met them before. So I think, I think that's great. And for all those event hosts out there, I find that when I wave to somebody at the beginning of an event, the retention rate among those people that I've waved to has nothing to do with me. Retention rate among those people that I've waved to is much higher than people that I haven't waved to. So it's just a really great thing, a great practice um, to keep in mind as you're hosting your event. Yes. 
It's beautiful. And I want to emphasize, like, if you have a community that has love and trust already built into it, this will just amplify that, right? Is that, you know, it's not going to facilitate the relationships for you. It's going to be a tool for you to deepen those relationships, which mm -hmm. is really beautiful. Do we want to tell them about the bubbles and what's coming up? What do you think? Do you mean, you mean the, the, like, meeting spot bubbles? The meeting spot. You know what? They're called meeting spots. You know, I call them bubbles. I just like, I'm like, I, all of them are good terms, but you're right. They're meeting they spots. Like bubbles. Uh, they're okay. This is one of my favorite, like fun things is that they have different things you can write on them. So for one mm -hmm. company, it could be like, okay, people from, you know, from this kind of organization, go to one bubble, this, this country, go to another bubble from this birthday, go to this bubble. You can break people up in categories that way. You can also make them icebreaker questions. Like I told you all earlier, mm -hmm. uh, in this particular situation, we're going to hang out a little bit afterwards and you can get a one-on-one -on -one event consult where I can brainstorm some ideas with you. I see Rosie is in here. I know Rosie and I have talked about some event ideas and she has a great question in there. Yep. Uh, if you want to brainstorm, you have questions on the platform and Tony is also going to be running around. Sarah is around here. She's lovely. Uh, I, I'm going to shout out Andrew, who is a longtime Toucan host, who's also here. Yeah, and if yeah. he feels inspired, maybe he'll share some nuggets with you. Um, so we'll be jumping around where people can join into those bubbles. All you have to do is hover over the bubble and click join, or you can hover over an individual's bubble and click join for them. If you're in the middle of a phone call, this is like a random tip. You could actually lock your room. Uh, so not letting anybody else join you. So that's, that's happened at other events before where people want to stay at the event, but they don't want any interruptions. Mm -hmm. So I did that earlier with a conversation I was having. So if you do have a phone call and you step out for a few minutes, put a little lock button, hover over your picture, and you'll be able to see it. Thank you for the love, Andrew. I appreciate it. Uh, so we do have a question from Rosie. How do you make a pub like trivia night in mm -hmm. Toucan? We did Jeopardy in here, and uh, somebody in this bubble uh, won the Jeopardy game and won a Toucan sweatshirt before I worked for Toucan, which is all right. <laughs> yeah. All I do is win. But do you have thoughts on that? Because I have thoughts, but I'm curious. So many. Um, I've I've run Toucan Trivia, um, Toucan Jeopardy several times. It was one of the kind of very early event types that I wanted to test out, and it worked really very well. Um, what I ended up doing, there is this this great resource out there called Slides Carnival, and Slides Carnival. Um, speaking of third party tools that you can use. Slides Carnival, for anybody who doesn't know, has a bunch of PowerPoint and Google Slides templates. And so this is really helpful for Jeopardy, but it's also really helpful if you're in school because it will automatically blow all of your teachers away and they will give you a super great grade regardless of the quality of your presentation because it just looks really nice. Anyway, they have a Jeopardy um, template. And so what you can do is you can come up with questions, put them in that template. And then when you click on um, the slides, they'll actually jump immediately to the, the um, proper sort of page in the, in the presentation because it's pre-coded like that. So what I did, I came up with all these questions. We brought everybody onto the platform and I said, everybody get into groups and so one time i did if your birthday falls within this range one time i did if you're wearing this color shirt um some random way of breaking people up they get into their own groups and i said okay i'm gonna be the caller i'm gonna be the moderator i have all the questions i'm gonna be presenting but everybody from each group i'm gonna need one representative that representative went up on the stage like Shiley and I are now, but we're still in their group. So the cool thing about Toucan is when you are in a group, you can hear everybody's audio in that group and see their video. But when you are on stage, you're the only one that everybody can see. So you can still hear everybody in your group, but nobody else in the space can hear your group. They can just hear you. So as I ran through questions i said okay whoever sends me a heart first gets to answer the question i would then call on that person and their team will have conferred kind of behind the scenes and then that person on stage would deliver the answer so it was this great what way of involving everyone <laughs> while taking advantage of the kind of sneaky capabilities of toucan where 
you know, groups can talk amongst themselves and also have it be interactive so that everybody could hear all the answers. Um, so it's, it's something that I'm really happy to talk to you about and help you with because I have a lot of experience with it. Um, but it's a, it's a fantastic question. And with that, um, I actually just, I want to finish this off. I mentioned some of these third party tools that you can use. So I mentioned Slides Carnival. I mentioned Restream for live streaming, but other things that our users really love doing, um, recording events. Toucan currently isn't, there isn't recording within the platform itself, but we use a really reliable third party um, software called Loom that creates great um, screen recordings and will also record your audio. So highly recommend them, especially if you're recording a presentation. Then for kind of more complicated alternating video and um, photo inputs, there is a service called ManyCam that we love um, that allows me whenever I want to, to change my video instead of my video, I can put up a QR code. So instead of my face, you would just see a QR code and that helps people access websites or blogs or um, polls. And on that note, our favorite polling um, software is called Slido and it, is interactive real-time polling so you can just share it by a qr code or share it by a link and everybody can participate in that moment you can close it you can open it again you can watch um the results come in and the bars kind of change depending on where where the votes were cast so that's a lot of information that we threw at you, but like <laughs> Shiley and I have said, I we are in this space and here to chat with you guys one-on-one. -on -one. We'd love to hear your ideas. We'd love to hear your stories too, because that helps us get inspired um, when it comes to, to hosting new you. events. We're here to help you. So please stay, please stay. We want to talk <laughs> to you. Um, and feel free to join any of the, the meeting spots, the labeled circles in this um, space. We're here to talk to you. So thank you so much. Yes. And um, Pleasure. we're looking forward, to, looking forward to learning more about you. Yes, it's a more networking out of the boxes as Antonia wrote so beautifully. Cool, we'll see oh, you yeah. at the event. Party on. See you, all, see you all down there.